Hi there, guys. Bless you. I want to share with you today about resilient faith, bounce back faith. I don't know if you've ever been in this place where you felt like you want to give up, where there's like no more hope, like you're at the end of your rope, like, Lord God, uh, I'm not going to get out of bed this morning. It's just too difficult, too long. I don't know what it is. Maybe it's health. Maybe you've got cancer. Maybe you're in a broken marriage. Maybe it's finances, which are like just not coming through for you. 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verses 8 and 9 says, We are hard pressed on every side, but not crushed. Perplexed, but not in despair. Persecuted, but not abandoned. Struck down, but not destroyed. Now the definition of resilience, the definition of bounce back faith, is the ability to recover quickly from something. That's right. The ability to resume your original state your original vision, the purpose of what God's called you to do, that's bounce back. That's resilience. John 10.10 10 says, the thief comes not, but, but, this is why he comes, but that he may steal, kill, and destroy. But Jesus says, I come that you may have life, and life more abundantly. Praise God. I want to pray with you right now before we get into this message. Father, I pray that bounce back faith resilient faith, Lord God, will be the portion for my brother or sister listening to this today. Touch them, Lord God. Release to them this bounce back anointing. Father, release to them that anointing that's resident within them to bounce back from the situation in Jesus' mighty name. You know that the enemy wants to steal, he wants to kill, and he wants to destroy. Let's have a look at this. The word steal means to pilfer, it means to take away. It means to whip you down. It means to embezzle you or pickpocket you. And maybe you've been embezzled. Maybe you've been pickpocketed. Maybe you've had things stolen from you maybe all your life. Maybe your even very identity has been stolen. But I want to say to you that God has a plan and a purpose for you. You know the word kill means to slaughter. That's right. Chop your head off. Cut your heart out. Totally eradicate you and take away life from you. Now the word destroy is one further. It means to wipe out your entire lineage, to blot you from the face of the earth, to bring devastation, to tear down and to level the ground. That's what the enemy's purpose is. Satan has an agenda, and that is to cause you to fall. Satan has an agenda, and that is to remove you from the love of God. Ephesians chapter 6 verses 10 to 18 says, and I'm going to paraphrase this. It goes like this, you know, finally, finally, at the end of this, now listen, finally, be strong in the Lord and the strength of his might. Put on the whole armor of God. Now let me say this, armor is not weapons. Put on the whole armor of God so that you can stand against the strategy, the schemes, and the wiles of the devil. We do not wrestle against flesh and blood. We wrestle against three things, principalities, powers, and spiritual forces in the heavenly places. Now, take up the whole armor of God, the helmet of salvation, the breastplate of righteousness, the shield of faith, the sword of the Spirit, the belt of truth, and shoes, ready to preach the gospel. That's right. And then it says, pray in the Spirit at all times. Now, my brothers and sisters, we need to know who our enemy is. Our enemy is the powers and the rulers of the air, principalities and authorities, and spiritual forces in high places. And we need to know what our armor is. Our armor is not our weapons. Well, one or two of them might be. You know, the, the spirit of the, the sword of the spirit, definitely, that is a weapon. But the helmet of salvation is your armor to protect your mind, to keep your mind true and pure and clean before the Lord. Your breastplate of righteousness is to show you and keep you that your heart is right and pure before God. You know, when the Father looks at you and he sees your heart, he doesn't see a deceitful heart. He doesn't see a wicked heart. He sees the breastplate of righteousness, pure white, pure white, your shield of faith. Oh, my brothers and sisters, this is such an awesome thing. You know, God has got faith in you. God has got faith in himself because he who began a good work in you, he is faithful to complete it. The sword of your spirit. I mean, the sword of the word. The sword of the word. The sword of the word is what pierces darkness and sets captives free. The belt of truth. When everything, when everything is coming against you and there's lies, then you hold on to that belt of truth because that's what keeps you girded and safe. 
and the shoes ready to preach the gospel at all times. My brothers and sisters, when you wear the shoes ready to preach the gospel, you will be doing what the Lord's called you to do. Now we need to see that God says we've got bounce back faith. And God is expecting you to bounce back. And I believe this is what God says. This is the time for bounce back. God says to you, it's bounce back time. Bounce back. Don't allow this thing to bury you. Allow it to propel you into your destiny. Don't allow this thing to suffocate you. Allow this thing to give you new life, new breath. Don't allow this thing to get leverage over you. Use this as leverage for your destiny. Yes, some people in the Bible who bounced back. Samson had his very vision taken away from him. He turned his eyes off the Lord and he put his eyes on another woman and he had his very eyes plucked out of his head. He lost his vision. Job kept his promise, kept communion with the Lord every day. And he went through the deepest test of his life. He had lost everything, his wife, his children, his land, his property, everything, be it cars, aeroplanes. Okay, I know he never had cars and aeroplanes, but he lost everything, my friends, everything. But he never gave up. Even his friends said, turn away from God. He never chose to give up. He had bounce back faith. David bounced back after being in adultery. David bounced back after being in the cave of Adullam. We see Jonah bounced back after running from God. Daniel bounced back from the lions. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego bounced back from that fiery furnace. Jacob bounced back after wrestling with the angel of the Lord. Noah bounced back after the flood. We see Abraham bounced back after offering Isaac. We see Paul bounced back after his ship was about to sink. We see Peter bounced back after he cut off that soldier's ear and he denied Jesus three times. We see our Lord bounce back. He hung on that cross. He went into the hell to fetch the keys from the devil and he bounced back. He bounced out of that cave. He came out of the grave. He's been resurrected and ascended into heaven and he's going to bounce back to earth. He's coming back as a mighty king on a white horse. I know some of you have bounced back. I know I have. I know there's been days where I've laid in bed and I've had pulled up that duvet over my face and I've said, I'm not going to get up today. But I pulled that duvet off me and I jumped out of bed and I bounced back because I know I've got bounce back faith. And I speak this to you, my friends. You have got bounce back faith. By the blood of the lamb and the word of your testimony, you will bounce back. By worshipping the Lord with all your hearts, not singing Kumbaya, but focusing on the Lord, you will see that the anointing will descend upon you. And that anointing will break the chain and you will bounce back. You've got the word of the Lord in your heart. The word of the Lord says, I will hide your word in my heart that I may not sin against you. Now bounce back and use the word of the Lord. You can pray in the spirit at all times. You say, Mark, I don't know if I can. Yes, you can. If you can't, please contact me and I'll help you. It's so easy. And what you do is you just start speaking in tongues. And I let my speaking in tongues become part of my very thinking process. You know that when I'm asleep at night, many times, many times I'm dreaming, I'm speaking in tongues. When I wake up in the morning, in the early hours of the morning, as I wake up, what's coming out my mouth is speaking in tongues. You know what the thing is? You've got to have thick skin. Yeah, that's a res resilient skin is thick skin. It's the ability to have skin like a flint. And I'm purposing never to give up. Know your enemy, my friends. The enemy, the enemy is sharp. But I want to tell you something. He has no, no at hold on, know your enemy. Know your enemy. If you've made a mistake, don't go curse the enemy. If God has put you in this situation, don't go curse your enemy. Know your enemy. There's three storms in life. Storms from God, storms from the devil, and storms you create yourself. That is storms from God. That is where Paul was in the boat. And Paul worshipped the Lord. Storms you create yourself. That's Jonah in the boat, and you repent before God. And storms from the enemy, that's Jesus in the boat, and you rebuke that storm. Let me pray with you right now. Father, I pray for the person watching this that they will have resilient faith bounce back faith in Jesus name and father where they don't have the ability to get up 
and even bounce back. They might be in a wheelchair. They might be riddled with cancer. They might be at the end of the ropes, gone through a divorce with absolutely not a coin in their pocket. They might feel that their life is, at, is finished. Father, I ask you that, you that you download hope, download vision, download blessing into their life, Lord God, and show them that they've got weapons of warfare to break the strategy of the enemy, that they've got armor that covers them from every weapon that the enemy throws at them. I thank you, Father, for, for your word this day, that you bless them in Jesus' mighty name. Amen.